Without these two things, your Facebook ads will likely fail. And actually, they've got nothing to do with Facebook. So if you stick around, I'll fill you in on the details. Ooh, you're hard, showing off. So the two things, quite simply, is having a really great, compelling offer and having a sales process, an effective sales process at the end of it. And I've actually got another YouTube with a really great guy, sales expert called James White. I'll put a link below it. It's an hour long training video which explains how to convert leads from Facebook ads. With Facebook ads, we generally, we obsess over the actual platform. We obsess over, you know, the tracking, how we're gonna link it in with our server side for the conversion API, um, what, numbers we're going to pull from the system, what metrics we're going to track, what creatives we're going to use. It goes on and on and on and we can become really, really technical with our actual ad build, which is what we specialize in. And if you follow this channel, if you like and subscribe, we'll explain to you some of that stuff and how you can improve your actual ads. But the reality is, even if you get all of that stuff, absolutely bang on and you really nail your Facebook ad setup, you're tracking everything without a great offer, you're just not gonna attract people. People aren't gonna click it because there are so many other businesses out there doing exactly what you do. If you're not in a competitive market space, the chances are that there's not that much money to be made in the industry that you're in. Consider a kitchen retailer, right? So if you're a kitchen retailer and you're a local kitchen retailer, and I had this conversation with one of our clients the other day, what is going to differentiate you to some of the big players like Ren Kitchens, B&Q, John Lewis, etc.? What's gonna make you different? Why should somebody come to you? What's your USP, your unique selling proposition that's gonna make them click on your ad? And what are you gonna offer them? What are you gonna entice and encourage them to actually click on your ad and pay any attention? You gotta remember when people are using Facebook, they're scrolling away, they're sat on the sofa in the evening and they're just looking to kill a bit of time, you know, see pictures of their friends and family and your ads are disruptive, they're jumping in front of them. So you need something compelling there and if there's not something compelling there that you can get across in about three seconds in your ad, they're just not gonna take the action that you want them to take. So the components of a Facebook ad are generally as follows. It will vary slightly time to time depending on what campaign you mode that you're offering. But right at the top, we have what, what I call the hook copy. So that is the bit of text that people see before dot, 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 see more. And the job of that bit of text is to entice people, to hook them. If you think they're there and they're scrolling away, scrolling, 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 what is gonna stop them and really hook them and get them to pay attention to your ad? With some people, it's gonna be the hook copy. For other people, it's gonna be the creative, which is the image or video. Preferably, you'll be testing a bit of both of these. And that can also cause people to stop if you have something that's gonna be immediately impactful. And then finally, at the bottom here, we have what we call the headline. And the headline can do that, but the headline, you've not got too many words to play with, but that's something that can be attention grabbing to people. But within these components, you need your hook. If it's boring, if it's bland, if it's just, hey, look, we sell whatever, we sell secondhand cars and we're in five miles radius of you, it's boring. People need to know what the offer is, what they're going to get from taking the action that you want them to take. And it has to differentiate you from your competitors. And you may think, like, why? Well, if somebody starts Googling and they start searching for um, commercial cleaning suppliers near me or something like that, then they're not just gonna be seeing your ads if you're a commercial cleaning supplier because Facebook will pick up the fact that these people are looking for these types of products or services, whether it be kitchens or cleaning. And they're gonna start, they're gonna consider all of the ads for that particular industry that they have that meet these requirements and they're gonna be putting them all in front of them. So your target customer's not just gonna see your ads for your commercial cleaning business or your kitchen supply business, they're going to see your competitions as well. So if your offer isn't compelling, doesn't tell them about how you are different or some sort of um, offer or service or discount or um, whatever, some sort of value stack, then your ads aren't gonna generate the attention. If it's vanilla, they're not gonna click. They're not gonna do what you want them to do.
Finally, we've got the sales process. Now that can take a, a, a variety of forms with Facebook ads because we've got to think, what do we want the person to do with the ad? So it might be to click and go through to your website. If they go through to your website, what is the one thing that you want that person to do on that page? Is it to fill in their details on a contact form and click submit? Um, is it to subscribe to an email list? Are you just looking for brand awareness? So we do need to think about our goals and objectives. But once somebody clicks, we need to think, what do we want them to do? When they come into our business as a lead or as an inquiry, what are we gonna do? What process are we gonna lead them through? So your ads can be super, super successful. They can drive loads of traffic. You might be running leads ads and you're getting loads of leads, but afterwards, if you don't have an effective sales process, if you haven't properly thought out what process, what funnel are we gonna take people through, then ultimately it'll be for nothing. And I'll give you an example. So we're running ads at the moment for a really big four-star hotel and wedding venue, and they're looking to increase their wedding bookings for 2023. So we started speaking with them and saying, well, you know, this, this is a 10 to 15,000 pound purchase for the bride. So we've done our market research. We know it's the women generally who are making a lot of the buying decisions around this. So we're running the ads, but at the same time they're seeing the ads for our client, they're gonna be seeing loads of other wedding venue ads. So what are we gonna ask them to do? If we go for a hard sale straight away and we start asking people, you know, book our weddings, it's gonna be 10,000 pounds, nobody's gonna do it. We ran two split tests one that offered a digital download of a brochure, and this was coming out very expensive, we thought, about 20 pounds for a digital download of a brochure. And bear in mind, when somebody downloads a digital brochure, it goes into their phone, they look at it for a little bit, and then it disappears and they can't find it again. The second one was a lead generation ad where we were offering to send them a physical hard copy brochure. So it comes with an extra cost because there's the postage cost, there's the printing costs, etc. But the digital brochure looks fantastic, it smells good, it comes with calls to action within it, it hangs around the house, even if it goes within a drawer, the mother-in-law comes around, they open the drawer, they see the brochure, this looks nice, and then it also opens the door to a sales process, because within that lead form, we send them, we capture their details, we get an email, we get a phone number, we get their name, we send them, and we get the address, sorry, we send them the physical brochure, and then a week later, we follow up with a call. And that call is just selling the next stage of the process. The next stage of that process is, did you have a look at our brochure? You know, we really hope you enjoyed it. Why don't you come and speak to, book in an appointment, speak to with one of our wedding planners, and come along and see the hotel, and we'll put on some, we'll put on some uh, nibbles, you can see the chefs, you can see the venue, and it's just selling that next stage and only after they've come down and they've explored everything they have to offer do we actually ask for the sale. And that's working. That's working as an effective lead generator and effective sales process. So have a think about with your ads what you're going to ask people to do and what journey that you're going to lead them on after they come into your business. Because otherwise you're going to develop a load of leads, a load of attention, a load of website visits but so what? So what? It, might, it just might not matter. Ultimately, you might be happy with that if you're after brand awareness, if you're after brand engagement, that sort of thing. Um, with Facebook ads, you can go direct for sale, but generally that's for lower cost products. Um, sales conversions, campaigns, the AI can work absolutely fantastically. But if you've got a higher ticket product, you need to be thinking about your sales journey and about what they're gonna do when they take the action that your hook and your ad has ultimately achieved. Okay, I hope that helps somebody out there. Um, do like and subscribe to the channel. Like I said, there's so much that goes into creating that perfect looking ad. And in this channel, we're gonna explore some of, the, some of the things that go into that, how you do your effective tracking, how you make the best use of Facebook's AI, how you launch sales conversions campaigns. There's lots of stuff that we can and will talk about. If you've got anything specific you want us to, to uh, cover, drop it in the comments below. Um, we're also gonna be talking about general digital marketing, particularly around SEO, Google Ads, and social media advertising. So like and subscribe, hope you enjoyed it, take care.